Hi, my name is Vicki Sharp, and I'd like to welcome you whoops, to the third annual Dan William Award, um, where we uh, give an award to that House staff member who best personifies uh, the characteristics of Dan as a physician. Um, back in the dark ages before I went to medical school, uh, the tradition was that um, physicians played golf on Wednesday afternoon. Um, there were also a group of physicians who did something else on Wednesday afternoon, uh, and that was they volunteered. They volunteered in places like um, Planned Parenthood and uh, free clinics. When I got back from medical school, um, and I went abroad, so that's what I mean when I say I went, came back, uh, that tradition had really disappeared. Um, I think doctors still played golf, but they didn't volunteer their time anymore in free clinics and Planned Parenthood, uh, except for one physician, Dr. Dan William, who I met when I was a PGY2 here uh, in the very early days of the AIDS epidemic. And then uh, I got to know um, much better when I came here in 1997, and I found Dan volunteering his time in the Samuels Clinic, which he did from about the mid-80s to 2001. Uh, Dan received the first uh, St. Luke's Roosevelt President's Award in 2002 for his uh, outstanding contributions. Uh, you're going to hear more about Dan uh, from his uh, partner and from some of his colleagues today. And um, as a way to introducing those people, I'm going to, he's not on the program, and he describes himself as un grand homme d'eux, for those of you who speak French, and those who don't, I won't translate. Uh, Dr. Gabriel Sara wants to say a few words. So, Gabriel. Thanks, Vicky, for introducing me. I, I, I came, I think, at, at every one of those awards, uh, and it's a special joy for me to be here talking about Dan and being with Dan. I, I always say that I love this picture because I feel that he's with us when I see it. And uh, what I would like to say that I was one of the few lucky people in this room who worked with Dan William. And I was a, just starting being attending here when I met Dan and I learned so much from him, so much medicine. It's just unbelievable the way he would take care of his patient. And I could talk a lot about him, but I know that there's little time. So I chose to speak about one thing, one, one major quality that he had, which I really this morning realized, well, what were the secrets for Dan for being such an amazing clinician and caring doctor? The most important thing, I think, that Dan is a listener. Dan listens. And listening doesn't mean, you know, shut up and let the other person talk. Really listening the way Dan does it. I never asked him, but I'm sure this is what he did, is that he is with the patient. He listens, he doesn't talk, he lets, lets the other person speak. But the other person feel so cared for, so loved, that they will say things that they would not say to another physician. And that's what gives him the clues for making a diagnosis, is listening first. The other thing that happens, and I would say I experienced this personally, and I hope that you will all experience this as doctors, if you are really with the patient, present to how they feel, you will hear things that they didn't tell you. I sound like a weirdo when I say that, but this is really true. You will hear things that they are feeling, and sometimes they're not aware of their own feeling. And you, while you're talking, you will talk about it, and they will be really, they'll say, well, you're right, this is how I feel, or what I have. So, so the listening is something that is really a quality that it's hard to acquire up front, but you have to be aware of it to acquire it. So he was an amazing listener, that's what I can say. I can say many more, but that's what I would say for today. The important thing today is that we are going back to the Dark Ages. You said in the Dark Ages? Okay. Forget it. We are going back to the Dark Ages now. Okay, and, and you, you're experiencing it with the computer right now. While I'm, I'm, I love computers, and I learned computers from Dan, who was an expert before anybody else was, I think things have changed, and now the computers are controlling our mind and our practice and our daily life, and I hate that. 
And I think this is a big danger that you're going to lose the skills of being a good clinician. So that award is becoming more and more important to get because you need to remember you have to forget the computer to be good doctors. You have to use them because it's practical and convenient, but they should not be between you and the patient. And I find that the more we are computerized and the less we're listening. That's why you have to remember you have to listen. You have to try to make this machine be away from you so you are with your patient feeling very strongly connected. So that's what I can say about Dan. I'll always say something about him because I can talk forever about Dan. I'd like to introduce Bob, who's a friend. And actually, Bob, I, I knew him for years and years, and I knew his voice on the phone. I knew immediately it was Bob on the phone. We had always phone calls referring patients to me and me calling him back. He actually is Dan's partner and ran his office probably the most efficiently run office in New York mm -hmm. with Bob. And, uh, and uh, we met after actually Dan passed away. And then I, I was really, I, I immediately loved Bob and we really connected instantly. So I'm very proud to be the one introducing Bob, who was behind this award with Dan's family, of course. And uh, so Samatha, you have a very important thing in your hand today because you're responsible for this award. You're responsible to continue being a Dan William kind of doctor, and then also make sure that everybody around you try to do the same thing. Thank you. Well, uh, thanks, Dr. Sarah. I always appreciate your words of wisdom and uh, your, your caring words for Dan, so uh, much appreciated. And I have to apologize that I'm not a great speaker, so uh, I do speak from notes. Uh, but I hope uh, that will be OK. Um, it is always a pleasure to uh, be here at this award ceremony. And uh, again, I want to thank Dr. Sharp, whose uh, sponsorship of this award uh, is why it's here, and uh, to Joe Trapani, who did all the uh, coordination of this uh, award luncheon. So thank you both. Um, we're here both to uh, retrospectively pay tribute to Dan Williams' medical career and to look ahead to the careers of the young physicians today who are here but whose careers are just beginning. Uh, Dan graduated from medical school in 1972 and trained at Manhattan's Veterans Administration Hospital and at Bellevue. He began his private practice in 1976 and for several years also worked for the New York City Department of Health, focusing on sexually transmitted diseases. He co-founded the Gay Men's Health Project, a free STD screening facility, and volunteered to treat patients evenings at a free clinic. In the very early 1980s, when he noticed symptoms of a new illness in his established patients, which of course was HIV, he worked tirelessly to try to unravel its etiology, to find therapies for his patients, and to learn how to interrupt its transmission. Dan's association with Roosevelt Hospital began in 1980 and lasted until his death in 2008. Besides admitting patients, he helped organize and initiate the Samuels Clinic, as you have just heard and volunteered his time there every Wednesday afternoon until his retirement from medical practice at the end of 2001. After his retirement, and as a volunteer, he continued at Roosevelt interviewing prospective intern, application, intern applicants, doing teaching rounds, and instructing second and third year medical students in both the science of medicine and in his own special art of communicating with his patients and putting them at ease. So for those of you attending this award ceremony for the first time, these are some of the values that we're celebrating and some of the highlights of the career that we're remembering. The qualities that Dan William brought to his interactions with individual patients, his love of teaching, his commitment to pass on his knowledge and expertise to younger physicians, and his willingness to volunteer his time are what we are remembering today. He made a big difference, but all of you who have chosen medicine as a career have in part done so because you want to make a difference, both to individuals 
and to the greater arc of humanity as well. Let this award and the retrospective of Dan's career serve as an inspiration and an example of how any individual with strong motivation and high values can affect positive change. Our speaker today, Peter Staley, is also a person whose imagination, talent, and perseverance has significantly altered the way HIV disease is regarded by the public, by the medical community, and by the government. Peter's activism is particularly focused on providing access to new therapies for HIV-infected people. His activity was recently chronicled in the 2012 Oscar-nominated Oscar documentary, How to Survive a Plague, and he is also the founder of AIDSmeds.com, an educational website for people living with HIV. And he was Dan Williams' patient for many years. Peter. Thank you. Um, in Camus' The Plague, the doctor gets into an argument uh, with a friend about the existence of God. And finally, in exacerbation, he says, yes, you're thinking it calls for pride to feel that way, but I assure you I have no more than the pride that's needed to keep me going. I have no idea what's awaiting me or what will happen when all this ends. For the moment, I know this. There are sick people, and they need cure." <coughs> End quote. Now, I have no idea if Dan William believed in God. I consider myself a humanist with an abiding belief in our innate but all too often unused abilities to love and to be selfless. Dr. Dan William, my doctor during the plague years, was a shining example of humanity's best, tapping reserves of love and selflessness year after dark year. I found him, like many did, in the early 1980s. I was a relatively new arrival to New York City, young and deeply closeted. He was the openly and comfortably gay doctor on West 57th Street that hundreds of us found just by asking a friend or two. We only wanted health care without judgment. Better yet, we wanted health care with empathy. By the time I was diagnosed with what was then called AIDS-related complex in the fall of 1985, it would now be called stage three or symptomatic HIV infection, Dan's office was already under full assault from the plague. By year's end, there were 15,527 cases of AIDS reported in the U.S. since the crisis began in 1981, and there were 12,529 deaths, a death rate of over 80%. By 1994 and 95, over 50,000 Americans were dying each year. In New York City, 8,000 residents were dying annually at the plague's peak. In the early years, hospitals were overwhelmed. Some patients would die quickly from PCP pneumonia on beds placed in hallways because rooms were all full. Even though epidemiologists had quickly pinned down exactly how HIV was spread, a toxic combination of fear and bigotry often crept into our healthcare settings. Hospital meals were left undelivered. Bed sheets were left unchanged. What amazes me to this day was how seemingly calm and comforting Dan's office remained throughout those tragic years. All of us would go down those few steps to his first floor office at 415 West, 15, West 57th Street at least once every three months for blood work and a patient give and take on the latest news of possible treatments. His, his partner Bob and his assistant Sam ran the place with calm and friendly efficiency, never once letting on how often they had to deliver painful news 
behind closed doors. Bob, I want to personally thank you, along with Dan, for taking care of me and hundreds of our gay brothers over nearly two decades. I can barely imagine the pressure you were under or the loss you endured, yet you cared for us with such grace and fortitude. I remember how frightened I was when Dan confirmed why my lymph nodes were swollen, why I was having night sweats that soaked my sheets. There were no treatments at the time, and the death of Rock Hudson had sent the country into a panic. I wondered if anyone would touch me again. During one of my early follow-up visits with Dan, he did something probably insignificant to him, but life-changing for me, and I'll never forget it. He had to give me a vaccine shot of some sort in the arm, and a drop of blood appeared after the needle was removed. It was the first time since my diagnosis that I saw myself bleed. That one drop of blood reminded me of all the shame and fear I felt and the stigma I faced. To my surprise, Dan wasn't wearing any gloves. And with a nervous laugh, I warned him about the blood on my arm. He smiled and went into that science teacher geeky mode he was famous for. I'm not worried, he said. A person's skin is our first line of defense against disease and provides a remarkably protective barrier against hard to transmit viruses like HIV. He then reached out and touched my drop of blood with his index finger and said, see? As he washed his hands and told me to come back in three months, he helped wash away my shame and fear. He taught me that knowledge trumps fear, a great and necessary lesson for fighting a plague. I began with Camus' plague, and I'll end with it too. What's true of all the evils in the world is true of plague as well. It helps men to rise above themselves. Dan William was one of those men. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, for wonderful remarks. Jin Su is going to present um, this year's awardee. Uh, thank you, Vicki. Uh, before we introduce uh, this year's winner, I, I just wanted to acknowledge in the audience uh, our past winners. Um, and on this table, we've got Cesar Figueroa, who was our inaugural winner two years ago. Cesar, if, if you can just stand up for a second. <laughs> Dr. Figueroa is uh, doing his Infectious Disease Fellowship at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering. And having been a graduate there uh, of the ID program myself, I, I can relate to the pain and look of <laughs> fatigue in his expression. Uh, but And I, I understand you're staying for an additional year of research. Um, and sitting next to Dr. Figueroa is last year's winner, Melissa Lesko. Uh, <laughs> and Melissa it will be starting a fellowship in pulmonary critical, uh, critical care at NYU Bellevue. Uh, I, I'm not the official presenter, uh, uh, presenter for this year's winner, uh, but the... She, our winner is so good, we were fighting to see who would get to present. So I'll, I'll just say a couple of quick words. Uh, uh, first time I had a chance to work with Samantha was when she was an intern on the HIV medicine service. And, it, it, and so, some people might consider it a, maybe a difficult service, uh, psychosocial issues and so forth. But Samantha really embraced those issues. That it was not all about pathophysiology or differential diagnosis, that you need to treat the whole patient. So I was not a bit surprised when I found out later that she signed on for three additional tours of the HIV medicine service. And uh, we certainly thank you for that. So uh, to officially introduce our winner, I want to introduce Dr. Bijal Mehta, who's the Senior Associate Program Director. Thank you. I, I too will use notes. I get nervous in front of large crowds. Uh, the more and more I, I did get to work with Dr. William, and he was just an amazing teacher. I, I, my uh, 
encounters with him were really after his retirement when he was still actively teaching him but I, I loved hearing all of these early stories so thank you and and in my mind it it further confirm that we chose the right person to receive this award this year. So it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, one of our graduating residents, Dr. Samatha Paladugu. Uh, Samatha joined our training program in 2010 after completing her medical education at Siddharth Medical College in India. And as Jin said, during her internship, she was really noted uh, for her especially caring attitude and compassion towards her patients. Uh, as a PGY2, she really began to, to shine and be noticed as an extremely professional young physician and a very knowledgeable resident, uh, and one who, despite her quiet nature, was not afraid to ask questions and speak up and express opinions when necessary. And I'll just share a quote I, I pulled from one of her, a typical quote from one of her evaluations. Samatha is one of the smartest, kindest, and most helpful residents I've worked with. She has an excellent fund of knowledge and is very thorough. She never hesitated to stop what she was doing if I ever needed help and always made sure that any patient issues were brought to her attention. Truly a pleasure to work with. By her PGY3 year, uh, she became what I will call the quiet rock star. Uh, her interns love her for her flexibility, giving them just the right balance of autonomy and supervision and support that they need. Her peers love her for being approachable and always being the one to help out uh, in any crisis situation. Her attendings love her for being clinically excellent, efficient, thorough, and calm under pressure. And the nurses love her for being really a respectful team player. Her patients obviously love her for her compassion, dedication, and advocacy. And lastly, her program directors love her for her commitment to excellence and being the superior role model that she is to all of us. So I think Dr. Daniel Williams' legacy of caring, compassion, and truly putting the patients first are fully embodied in this wonderful graduating resident. And simply put, I think we would all easily choose Dr. Paladugu for it to care for us as many chose Dr. William many years ago. So on behalf of the Department of Medicine and the training program, I would like to congratulate Dr. Samatha Paladugu for receiving this award. And uh, Dr. Paladugu's name will, will be engraved on a, on a plaque that we have in the Department of Medicine here at Roosevelt as the third winner. And and a special gift from Dr. Sharp and the center. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Thank I'm a bit anxious and nervous, so I'm going to <laughs> keep my paper on. So I'm deeply honored to receive and accept the Dan William Award. I would like to thank Dr. Dan William family and the selection committee for nominating me for this prestigious award. I never imagined that um, one day I would be standing here accepting the prestigious Dan William Award and I'm truly grateful. I would like to thank the program directors, Dr. Freed, Dr. Mehta, who is also my mentor, and thank you so much for supporting me, and Dr. Sue, um, couldn't see, I'm sorry, <laughs> Dr. Sue and Dr. Vito for all the guidance I have received. I would like to thank all the wonderful attending physicians, chiefs, I couldn't see that, yeah. Chiefs. Sorry, I'm chiefs, thank you. And all my colleagues in the internal medicine residency program here at St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital, who have been my friends, philosophers, and guides. Last but not least, I thank my family, who have been my greatest advocates and supporters throughout my residency. In particular, I want to acknowledge my mother, 
who has been a beacon of inspiration. So clinical medicine is a discipline synonymous with caring. The origins of this great field lie in the most fundamental, fundamentals of human impulses, to care for the sick, the frail, and the helpless in distress. And few understood this better than Dr. Dan William. And his exemplary dedication to patient care has inspired many budding physicians. His work and achievements are indeed outstanding, and no words are adequate to describe his contribution. And I'm elated to receive this award, and I shall strive throughout my career to live up to this honor and to perform in a manner consistent with the merits of the award. And I would like to conclude with one of my favorite quotes by Aristotle. We are what we repeatedly do. So excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Samantha, and congratulations. Um, so that ends our program today. Um, I, I um, really want to give additional thanks uh, to Bob Friedman for originating the idea of the Dan William Award. And each year it actually becomes more meaningful as the chaos in our healthcare system becomes greater. It, um, it means a lot to take a few moments to sit and remember the core values, uh, the soul of medicine as exemplified by Dr. William and the awardee this year in the last two years. So thank you, Bob, for being the inspiration. We, uh, we need these few hours, so thank you. Enjoy the rest of your lunch. Thank you.